Hello everyone, my name is Jakar Lewis, and I'm the administrator for this group as well as the author of the Kitchen Series P6 Math Edition, which is a workbook that I created in order to better assist you guys in prepping for the math portion of the T's. So today we're going to do a mini review. I'm going to do about two or three questions um, really quick um, with word problems involving ratios. Um, what tends to happen all the time is that people always say I have such a hard time with word problems and this, that, and the other. And of course, my first question is always, well, what type of word problems is giving you an issue? Because there are so many topics that can fall under a word problem. You want to make sure that you can pinpoint that first so you can focus on the sub skill. And then from there, you can work to strengthen your skill set in terms of solving word problems. All right, so today's focus, again, is going to be ratios. So when it comes to ratios, there are going to be three specific things they're going to be looking for you guys to do. Um, for one, you guys have to be able to write the ratio um, given certain quantities. You guys have to be able to identify equivalent ratios. And you guys also have to be able to find a missing value given a ratio. So I'm going to show you guys an example of each of those today. Um, the first one, I think I'm going to start with, well, no, I'll start the easiest one, which is being able to write the ratio given certain quantities. So I'll take one of our practice problems from the book. Oh, I'm not going to write it out only because it just takes up so much space. And then I'll have to erase it and show you guys how to do all of the work. And of course, if you don't have the book, the book contains over 1,400 practice questions, which of course, as a former math teacher, I always recommend that you guys practice it over and over and over again so that you guys are able to retain the process associated with the topic so that you'll be more successful. When you get to your test, what tends to happen is that um, some people don't study enough or they try to cram. And when you actually get to your test, you end up forgetting the information. So my goal is always retention. And the only way you can retain is to actually practice it. All right. Let's see. Oh, I want to write this one out because it's not that long. All right. And of course, if anybody has any questions as I'm going, feel free to drop them in the comments so that I can respond. Um, one thing that I always tell people is that this is a space where you guys should make mistakes because we want to be able to correct that behavior. You want to be able to pinpoint what's really giving you a problem so that as you're practicing, we're able to fix that behavior so that you can increase your score. Um, what people tend to do a lot out of fear is they avoid the topics that they know give them issues, right? But how can we get better at that if we don't address what the particular problem is? All right, so the question says, a jewelry box contains 16 earrings, eight bracelets, seven necklaces, and two watches. Um, the first question says, what is the ratio of bracelets to watches? So. Um, an acronym that we use throughout the book, a common theme, um, is KISS IT, which is, which is um, short for Keep It Super Simple. What we always want to do anytime we're dealing with any topic for this test is you want to dumb it down. Dumb it down in the sense that you have to put it in terms or in a certain number of steps so that it's easier for you to be able to retain. Because again, the biggest issue is that a lot of people get to their test and they blank out. So in the midst of you studying, you want to recognize that that is very possible and you work towards the retention of that through extended practice. So in terms of ratios, writing a ratio between two quantities, it's only two steps. First thing you need to do is you need to identify what's being compared. So what two things are we talking about? Ratios are always going to be a comparison of two different units, of course, at different values. So you know how people say um, things are like apples and oranges. That would be an example of a ratio because we're comparing two completely different things. So the first question says, what is the ratio of bracelets to watches? So first things first, what are we comparing? We're comparing bracelets and watches. So those are going to be two things that I'm going to zoom in on. So I have eight bracelets and I have two watches. All right, so ratios can be written three different ways. They can be written with the word two. They can be written with a colon or they can be written as a fraction. Make sure you guys understand that's all interchangeable. So sometimes... Um, in, que in question form, they may have a ratio written as a fraction, but the answer choices may have ratios. I mean, they may have colons or they may have the word two. So just understand again that ratios can be written three different ways and you have to be able to recognize that when you see it. So if I do the ratio of bracelets to watches, I can write it three different ways. I can write it as eight colon two. I can write it as eight 
two two, or I can write it as eight over two. All right, so remember, these are three different ways. So this is the same answer in three different forms because they can give it to you three different ways for your test. Um, now, in looking at this, ratios are, have to be treated exactly like fractions. So anytime we're dealing with fractions, you guys always have to reduce it down to its lowest term. It's the same as that thing with ratios. And of course, if you're having a problem with reducing fractions, that's a sub skill, meaning something small or minor that you need to be able to execute bigger problems that you should work on. Because if you don't know how to reduce fractions, you're going to have a really hard time with this test. You know, even though they do give you a calculator, you still want to make sure you work towards strengthening that. So 8 over 2 is going to reduce down to 4 over 1. Um, don't reduce this any further to do like 4 divided by 1 and make it 4 because it still has to be a ratio, which means it's comparing two different things, all right? So you don't want to actually eliminate that. So it could be 4, I stuck it right upside down, 4 to 1. Or it can be 4 colon 1. All right, and again, this question said, a jewelry box contains 16 earrings, eight bracelets, seven necklaces, and two watches. And the first question said, what is the ratio of bracelets to watches? So first things first is you always understand what's being, what's being compared. In this instance, it was bracelets and watches. All right, and of course, I, I wrote it three different ways just for you guys to be able to see that it could be in any one of these three forms, a colon, the word two, or a fraction form. And um, the most important thing, or one of the most important things you have to remember is that you have to treat them exactly like fractions. They, all, they always have to be reduced down to their lowest terms. All right, so I'm going to check to see if you have any questions before we move on to part B of the question. And then we'll go from there. No? All right, cool. All right, so part B is gonna be a, what's considered like a two-step problem. So if you guys look at um, some of the things you guys are expected to do, one of the questions is solving real real world one or multi-step, dang, why did that? Real world one or multi-step problem. So multi-step meaning that you guys have to do a couple of different things in order to be able to um, execute it fully. And again, this is just an example problem from the book. And if you haven't ordered a book this week, I'm offering free shipping all week, all the way up until Sunday, which is pretty cool, especially for people who are kind of on a budget. So it does save you a few dollars. Um, our boot camp last night was really great. I definitely enjoyed it. We covered ratios, um, proportions and percentages, and everything that we did last night was based off of word problems. And the gist of the um boot camps is for you guys to be able to get live instruction from me but being able to ask specific questions me creating resources for it to go along with so that i can i can show you guys all of the different ways information can be presented so that you are more successful on your test so kind of similar to like what we're doing now but not as intimate not as focused because here i can only do so much with the boot camp is pre-planned so it's a little different um, we have another boot camp coming up this Sunday, it'll be from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this Sunday, we're going to cover operations with fractions. So um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. Um, word problems with rational numbers. So that would include word problems with fractions, decimals, percent. Um, we did, what else are we doing? Solving equations in one variable. We're doing that as well, as well as translating expressions equations and inequalities we'll be covering that this sunday so tickets are 25 dollars. you can purchase them online um, through the link that we have posted on the page and for this one i'm only opening up 15 seats so make sure you grab your tickets before they um sell out all right so part b says what is the ratio of bracelets and watches to necklaces and earrings all right so anytime we see the word and i think i'm gonna have to write it out so you can see it um, and always means you're going to add. So what happens is those small things that are contained in the word problems, people will miss those and that's why they're not able to execute it. So you have to make sure when they're giving you guys word problems, every single little thing counts, right? So if you're a person and you miss that or you don't understand that, if they're asking me bracelets and watches, you should know, it should click in your head, I have to combine those two to do addition. And that's one of the things that I've seen over time that that people have made a mistake with. So you wanna make sure, again, as you're practicing, you wanna catch those mistakes so that you're able to fix them 
once you get to your test. And again, don't have that fear of making a mistake because that's what you want to do. And I always want people to feel like this page, this page is a safe space for you to do that. You know, because you want to be able to get help, whether it's from me or whether it's from one of your peers. Um, somebody is here to help you, but you just have to be willing to kind of put yourself out there. All right, again, so if I look at the question from the top, it says a jewelry box contains 16 earrings, eight bracelets, seven necklaces, and two watches. What is the ratio of bracelets and watches to necklaces and earrings? So you should know when you see this word and, that's going to be a trigger for you to let you know that you need to add. All right, so we're going to be pulling the information from all four of these items separately before we're actually able to set up our ratio. So a good thing is, in identifying our units first, this helps out because not all we're doing is we're substituting in. So if I go to bracelets, I have eight bracelets. So instead of the word bracelets, I'm going to put the number eight. All right, watches. I have two watches, so I'm going to insert a two there. All right, now we go to the bottom. All right, if we go to necklaces, I have, where is the cricket? I have seven necklaces. All right, and... I have 16 earrings and then from here we're just going to simplify so I know 8 plus 10 is 2 and I know 7 and 16 is 23 so I know that the ratio of bracelets and watches to necklaces and earrings is going to be 10 over 10 23 or we can write it as 10 colon 23 or we can write it as 10 to 23 and the reason why I keep expressing these in three different values because you have to be able to recognize during your test that when they present ratios it can be in three different forms it can start in one form such as fraction form but your answer key can be with colons it can be with the word two and i don't want that to be something small that throws you off so anytime we're talking about practicing and retention you guys want to pay attention to the process Process meaning that when we talk about ratios, right? So with this particular topic, we're talking about identifying ratios from given information, right? There's a certain process to this. So we identified what we were talking about and we set up our ratio. If you approach every single topic like that, you won't have a problem executing it. The problem is that you guys are trying to find too many different methods to solve one problem or you're trying to use a shortcut here and if the shortcut doesn't work then you want to use another method so i always tell everybody um in terms of instruction you have to pick one method that's tried and true so sometimes you do have to do the method that's the longer method but i would rather you be safe with the method that takes longer and always work work versus you try to take a shortcut to cut time and it doesn't work every time so that's that's something that you have to understand in yourself so that it's not an issue all right, and again, that is falling under ratios with the sub skill, identifying ratios from given information. So it's always very small things. Um, in terms of executing those particular types of problems, it's not hard in terms of the arithmetic, like the math, but you have to make sure that you're thinking correctly and you're pulling the correct information out. That's definitely what's... All right, sorry, I'm back. But that's going to be the most important thing um, in terms of executing your word problems is being able to pull out that information correctly. That's where a lot of people are making the mistakes. And again, this group is that safe space where you guys can make those mistakes so that we can fix them. All right, so the second part of ratios, another sub skill, you guys have to be able to identify what are called equivalent ratios. Um, identifying equivalent ratios, the process is very simple. What people don't like, um, one of the things I've learned is from the way that I choose to do instruction with it is that people feel like it's too much work. But if I show you how to do the shortcut, the shortcut doesn't always work if you're not really fluid in math. So I would much rather show you something that takes you about 15 to 20 more seconds to execute um, versus me trying to teach you a shortcut. But I always tell people, if you have a method that's already tried and true for you and it works every single time, not sometimes, not eight out of 10 times, not nine out of 10 times, it works for you every single time and you stick with that. If you have something that's not working all the time, then you're gonna have to come over to this side and adopt this method so that you can increase your chances of getting a higher score. All right, uh, I do not want to write out these questions. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm gonna drive fast. All right, so 
So we'll start with a simple one just so we can kind of get the math part of it, the process down, right? So it's not going to be so much of a word problem. It's going to be something that's very straightforward. So I can show you guys how to kind of set it up. And then from there, we'll transition into a word problem. So I can show you guys how to pull the information out so it's a lot easier for you. And again, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to drop those in the comments. Um, if you're looking for extra practice, we have a great diagnostic located in the file tab that is really gate gate. This is really great in terms of helping you to gauge um, what your strengths and weaknesses are and it helps to guide your studying. Um, what tends to happen, I can't move that fast. Um, what tends to happen is a lot of you guys start studying, you guys are studying in the blind, and then you you think you know certain things that you may not know, and then you think you don't know certain things that you might actually know, and it just really just throws all of your studying off. So you want to make sure you work to rectify that. That's why there are groups like this that can correct that behavior so that you guys are successful in your endeavors, right? That's, that's really the, the gist of it. And try to um, find resources that help you to be able to practice a multiple choice form as much as you can. It's good to practice without it sometimes when you're first starting, but as you get close to your test, you want to be able to get more into that mode because you want to be able to introduce those strategies. So I always tell people when you're prepping for any type of test, it's going to be half content, half strategy. Sometimes there are going to be certain topics that you may not be well versed in because of many factors. Maybe you didn't have enough time to get prepped. Maybe it's just a topic that's always giving you a lot of problems or you can never really grasp it. So that's when our strategy comes into play. And oftentimes when we have a multiple choice, there's always a way to kind of eliminate certain questions. All right, so this says identify the ratio that is equivalent to 10 to 3, 10 colon 3. All right, so one quick um, strategy real quick. Anytime they give you, <coughs> sorry, Excuse me. <coughs> um, anytime they give you a ratio that is the opposite of what you're given. So you see how we have 10 to 3 in here, they have 3 over 10. That's considered the reciprocal, right? So I automatically know that's not going to be an equivalent ratio. So if you're in that boat, you can automatically eliminate that, right? So now instead of us having to do math in four situations, we're going to actually go ahead and do them in three situations. So that's where the strategy comes in so you can cut your time down. So anytime we're trying to identify equivalent ratios, um, the strategy that I like to use is cross multiplication because we're going to cross multiply the values to see if they come out to be equal. So I'm going to set up my first ratio where they give me 10 colon 3, and then we have 20 over 13. So when we say cross multiply, we're going to multiply top to bottom on both sides. So I'm going to say 10 times 13, and we're going to see if that's equal to 3 times 20. So if I do 10 times 13, that's 130. 3 times 20 is 60. So because these values are not equal, these are not equivalent ratios, right? So I can automatically eliminate that. So we're going to we're going to complete this process until we find something that balances out. So we're going to have 10 over 3 is equal to 20 over 6. So we cross multiply top to bottom. We're going to say 10 times 6 is equal to 3 times 20. And 60 is equal to 60. So of course, in this scenario, this will be our equivalent. Um, ratio. I'll go ahead and do the last one just so we can confirm that that one doesn't fit and then we'll go from there. So we're going to have 10 over 3 is equal to 33 over 1. We're going to cross multiply. So we're going to say 3 times 31 is equal to 10 times 1. 3 times 31 is 93 and 10 times 1 is 10 so those don't fit. Alright, so anytime they give you guys scenarios with equivalent ratios, you're going to set them up and cross multiply them. Um, this is a skill that will come second nature to you, especially after you've practiced a lot in reference to like proportions and percentages because it's something that you do in so many other processes that this particular setup process um, in the end shouldn't be something that's giving you trouble. If it does, that will be the reason why you can't execute proportions correctly or why you can't execute some um, percentage word problems correctly, you know, due to this. Alright? Perfect. Let me see if we have any questions. So I have my, my camera like turned the opposite way so I can't see what's on the screen. That's why I have to keep going back and forth. But of course, if you guys have any questions, let me know and we will go from there. So of course, this is just a mini review. So I'm only just touching on it to give you guys a couple tips and tricks 
um, it's really good to kind of have these notes in the back of your head so that when you're studying, if you have any type of discrepancy, more than likely I'll set something to kind of clear it up. And if not, um, I really always like when people like come in and say, hey, well, you forgot to do this, or what about if this happens? So then I know from an instructor's point of view what to add. All right, so I'm always here for feedback. I always want to be better, um, of course, so that you guys are able to execute the problem. So we'll go with our next um, word problem. I, I, it's so hard because even if I dash, it's so sad. <laughs> I was going to try to give y'all some more tips and tricks while I was writing, but then I'll stop writing and start talking. So do you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns as we're going through this? Is there anything that that I'm talking about that I'm clarifying for you or are you guys still confused um, about certain aspects of certain topics um and watching this I want you guys really to to become more aware of how much you guys are actually studying um honestly I would that's my very first study tip not that's not my very first one that's one of my study tips um I always tell people that you have to be honest with yourself in terms of how much you're actually studying because how much you put into it is how much you're going to get out of it. So sometimes people um, barely study or they try to cram and then they're complaining about why they didn't pass. And it's like, well, you didn't even put that much effort into it. So how could you expect to have a positive outcome? Now, sometimes in certain instances, there are people who study, 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 study really hard. They try their best and they don't come out they don't come out successfully. But what happens in those situations is that you have to, again, that goes back to being honest with yourself, is that you have a pretty good idea of what you're studying as to what you're grasping and what you're not grasping. And if you know that you're having a really hard time with that, sometimes you do have to spend money um, and you have to hire a tutor of what I hate to see all the time. Like people post these videos, right? And they talk about how they pass the T's and how you just gotta watch YouTube and um, you don't have to buy anything and for a lot of people, that's just not the case. Sometimes, more times than not, more times than not, you're going to have to purchase some type of resource because everybody can't learn just from YouTube videos. Everybody doesn't have that learning style. So if you know you're someone you don't have that learning style, you may be someone who needs direct instruction. It's nothing wrong with that. That's why I always tell people you can only really take the advice that you guys see um, to a certain extent because... The person who's talking about, they may be a completely different type of learner than you are. And you have to be very aware of your learning style because if you're not, it's very easy to get discouraged when you're watching all of these other people because then you start to question yourself and ask, well, why am I not getting this? Or why is it so different for, for, for me? When the reality is that you just have to adjust your strategy. It's just like everything else in life. Everybody has... Um, similar end goals so like everybody here has the end goal of being a nurse but everybody's path to nursing is different and that's how you have to kind of approach this test it's the same way you approach life everybody wants happiness everybody wants to be successful right but we all have different definitions of what success is we have different definitions of what happiness is and we all take very different routes individualized routes to get to those places so the same thing with the test you have to do what works best for you as a learner you can try different methods but if they don't work don't beat yourself up and don't feel like oh, i don't you know? All right, so it says the Dolphins ratio of wins to losses is five to two. The Cowboys have an equivalent ratio of wins to losses. Which option represents this ratio? So, of course, if they give away in these scenarios, it's going to be equivalent ratio. That should be a trigger. Um, when you're studying, you should create triggers in your mind um, of the processes. So, when you see equivalent ratios in your mind, you should already know cross multiply. We're cross multiplying to see which side is going to balance out. And you just take it from there. All right, so make sure you guys are working on those triggers as well. As you guys practice certain problems, understand what is your mind retrieving or what's your first response when you see certain types of problems. Are you second-guessing yourself? Are you automatically jumping into the process? Because that's the point you want to get yourself in. I don't want you guys to be at the test and you're like, well, oh, do I do this or do I do that? You shouldn't feel that way because if you still feel that way, that means you're not practicing correctly and you want to correct that behavior. So first things first, remember what I said when we see the opposite of the ratio they've given us. So they've given us... 
five to two. So I know if I see two to five, that's the reciprocal. So I can automatically cancel that out. All right, and then from here, we're gonna set up our ratios and we're going to cross multiply. So I have five over two is equal to 2.5 over two. And when I say cross multiply, we multiply top to bottom. So I'm gonna say five times two, and or it doesn't matter, you could say two times five, it's still gonna be the same answer. It's equal to two times 2.5. So five times two is 10. Two times 2.5 is five, those are equal, so we're gonna move on. All right, we have five over two is equal to 10 over four. So we cross multiply and we say two times 10 is equal to five times four. So 20 equals 20. So in this instance, it does work. All right, and we'll just do the last one just to clarify. Yeah, we didn't make any mistakes for top to bottom. Oh, I would have came on. I was about to say, wait, it's the same thing. What did I do wrong? All right, so we're saying two times eight is equal to five times five. So two times eight is 16, five times five is 25, those are equivalent. So this is where people try to take the shortcut. People will say, oh, well I know that five times two is 10 and two times two is four, so those are equivalent. So that shortcut does work. But if you get into a scenario and, what I'm trying to say, if you get in a scenario and you have values that don't multiply or divide evenly into, or technically divide evenly into one another, then it's not gonna work out. So that's why I always teach the long way, only because people have to understand that this is always gonna work. That shortcut will not always work depending on the values that they give you. And I don't want you to get to your test and so used to taking the shortcut, taking the short route, and you can't, and you get frustrated, and you make a mistake. So you always want to pick something again that's tried and true every single time. And this doesn't even take that long, so it's not even that, that big of a deal. All right, so let me check to see if we have any questions before I go to my last, last one. No? All right. So last question is being able to identify a missing value given a ratio. So this is very, very similar, like exactly similar to solver proportions. It's the same exact setup, the same exact pro process. The context of the word problem may be different, but the way that you set it up and solve is exactly the same. All right, so we're gonna go through one of those questions. <coughs> and then we'll be done. So I'm taking it that everybody that's watching doesn't have a really pro really big problem with um pro I mean what are we doing ratios? Sorry, I lost my train of thought real quick. Um with ratios, which is cool, I guess, but if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me. If you are, you can um always shoot me a question over in my inbox. Another disclaimer too, if you have purchased the book and you post the question from the book, I don't mind if you guys post one question, but don't post an entire page because I'm going to start deleting those posts only because, again, the information is um, copyrighted, of course, and I'm very sensitive to it because I don't think that people should have access to the content for free unless I choose to do that. So it's, it's way different than those big companies where people like share um, resources and do all that stuff because I had to create this all by myself. So... Of course, I'm not going to, I'm going to be very reluctant to have my information just out there, especially if, I, if I'm aware of it and it's like completely different. All right. So it says, if it takes 10 people to pull a 20 ton truck, how many people will it take to pull 35 ton? Right? So when we talk about process, remember I told you guys, you have to, you have to retain the process. So a giveaway with these scenarios, um, and along with solving proportions, is that they'll give you three values when you're looking for a fourth. And it's always going to be talked about two different units. So our very first step is to figure out what are we talking about. In this scenario, we're talking about um, people and tons, right? So we always want to set up our ratios first, just so we're able to better input, insert our values. So when you set this up, it's always going to be two ratios that are equivalent to one another. So you see how our prior example rolls back into this because now you're going to be able to solve it the same. All right, so I know I'm talking about people and tons. 
And when you guys are filling in your units, just make sure that they are the exact same on both sides, all right? This is different from convergence because when we do convergence, our units have to be diagonal from each other, all right? So remember, when we convert, we're changing. We're trying to eliminate something. When we're talking about ratios or we're talking about proportions, those are things that are equal in quantity. So it has to be equal units on both sides, all right? So normally, more nine out of ten times, um, the values that are in the same sentence are always going to go on the same side. So you see how it says, if it takes ten people to pull a 20-ton truck, that's the first part. So I know it's ten people can complete 20 tons. And it says how many people can do 35 times, all right? And then from here, we're going to cross multiply. So you always cross, cross multiply because basically we're looking for this value right here, the number of people. You're always going to cross multiply where you have two values. So I can't cross multiply 20 and a question mark or then put an X there, but I don't really like to put X there because it confuses people. Um, I know that I can cross multiply 10 and 35 because I have two values there. So if I do 10 times 35, that's going to equal 350, right? And then you always, 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 because this process never, ever, ever changes. You're always going to divide by what's left over. So we're going to do 350 divided by 20, which gives us 17.5. And then we say 17.5. What's 17.5 people? So, of course, we can't have half a person. So you always round up to the next number, which will be 18 people. All right, so process. Anytime you guys are in a scenario and we're trying to um, find in a missing value given a ratio, or if you're solving proportions, it's basically the same exact thing. You always set up your units to make sure they're equal on both sides. Insert your values. You're always gonna cross, multiply, and divide by whatever value is left over. So if you find yourself in a space and you're having trouble with any of the questions that I presented so far today, the workbook is definitely the best $40 that you can invest in prepping for your T's test because every single topic is broken down step by step. Um, it's a maximum of three steps for every single topic. Um, again, there are over 1,400 practice questions. Um, we have YouTube videos, and all of my YouTube videos cover the examples directly from the book. Um, again, this week we are doing, we are offering free shipping so you guys can purchase. Um, I'll pin the comment at the bottom. I'm at www.lewis-wilderpublishing.com, and you guys can choose free shipping at, I'm not free shipping, um, just choose in-store pickup at checkout, because that's just the local order, so I'll know that you um, are going to get the free shipping. Um, and other than that, if you're interested in attending our boot camp this Sunday, tickets are available online as well for $25, and it's a really great investment. And um, I'm, I was always, I'm always telling people, like, make sure you catch it now while the price is good, because eventually, you know, when I get really good at it, of course, with everything, the price is going to increase with the quality of instruction that you guys are getting. So thank you guys again today for your time. Our mini ratios review, which included um, identifying values given a ratio, um, identifying equivalent ratios, and solving for missing values given a ratio. Make sure you guys leave me any feedback, com questions, comments, or concerns so I can always make it better. I'll check one more time before I get off of here. If anybody has any questions, and then we'll go from there. All right, so again, I guess everybody's really doing ratios. Maybe you guys are at work or driving, check it out. But again, anybody who sees this later after live, make sure you guys drop me some feedback and let me know how everything is going. And I'll catch you guys next time. Um, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna create a poll after this um to see which which topic you guys would like me to do a video on again, and I'll do one again. Um not tomorrow, Wednesday, probably Thursday, and then we'll go from there. So again, my name is Jakar Lewis. I'm the administrator for this group. I'm also the author of the Kitchen Series T6 Math Edition. Thank you guys so much for your time today, and I'll um, be chatting with you guys, of course, for the next couple of days, and I'll go live again on Thursday. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you received your book. You're welcome.